Service animals are an invaluable asset to those with disabilities. They provide physical, emotional, and psychological support to their owners, and they are trained to perform a specific task. The biggest reason that this subject represents a frontier in history is that service animals were new and really helpful to the disabled in ways like telling you when you need to get medication and helping you when you're in distress. These support animals provide companionship, relieve loneliness, and sometimes help with depression. This quote proves that they were a frontier because it is from the ADA or the Americans with Disability Act and says they help with depression. For example, there was a veteran named Francis who was looking for a best friend, but also a service dog to com complete any daily task. Another reason that represents frontiers in history is how they helped people from the late 1700s to the early 1800s. They first attempted to help people back in 1780 at a hospital for the blind. A few decades later, Johann Wilhelm Klein created an institute for the blind and mentioned the idea of service dogs in an educational book for blind people. This claim is related to the thesis because it proves that there were guide dogs helping people in the past 200 to 300 years. Finally, first responder dogs represent a frontier in history because they help police track things, help look for people, and boost morale. As early as the mid-1700s, Dalmatians, the iconic fire dog, was an integral part of fire company crew as they ran alongside the horse-drawn fire coaches. Soothing horses and protecting them from thieves. Police candidates have been used in active police work for over a hundred years to help to apprehend criminals, with hounds being used to track the scent of criminals to potential victims. Other dogs are taught to locate avalanche victims and sniff out drugs, contraband, and fire accelerants. Dogs can also help people by rescuing them from rubble, such as when dogs were helped to find people trapped in debris during the fall of the Twin Towers due to the 9-11 terrorist attacks. This claim... It is often said the worst brings out our best, a principle that doesn't just apply to humans. And for me, Brittany was that once-in-a-lifetime canine partner. Brittany was Denise Corliss's golden retriever. The loyal pup was just two years old when dog and owner traveled from Texas to New York in the days after 9-11. Our job, our mission was to search for survivors and, and we were not able to locate any. The search dogs quickly became therapy dogs, offering much needed comfort. Doesn't it? That you know, I think Brittany and others like her, um, you know, are invaluable during uh, those times. Brittany would spend seven more years as a search dog before starting a second career listening to school kids read. In 2014, she was the last known 9-11 search dog still Tribute. alive, not just to Brittany, but to all dogs that serve when they're needed most. This claim proves that it's related to the thesis because the first responders both help them in the field. But for this group of canine handlers, four years. this is work change. We train every weekend, uh, most most Saturdays. Shane Johnson and Shiloh, his German Shepherd, are joining three other dogs and their handlers for another weekend training session near trucking. She loves this. We get out to training. It's her favorite thing to do uh, is, to, is to work. They're all search and rescue team members with Wolf. Wolf was the first of four canine SAR teams recognized in California. They're certified for all types of terrain and missions. So we're sort of like the seals or the rangers of the search dog world. The perfect firestorm among the charred rubble and ash, the remains of six victims. There cannot be any question when you're out looking for human remains on what your dog is indicating to. And the, the wildfires last year is a perfect example of that. Mary and Inca, a young Belgian Malinois, were dispatched to Lake County after the Valley Fire. Inca's job was to sniff out and find the remains of a missing person. But the intense smell of burning materials and leaking propane was a serious concern. We got to that particular location and I stepped out of the vehicle and I smelled that. It was overwhelming and immediately had doubts because if I can smell a gas that strong, imagine what it is to the dog who has such a sensitive nose. 
A Malinois sense of smell is about 40 times more sensitive than a human's, so Inca's nose prevailed. Indeed, there was an individual there, not visible, and uh, the, the authorities very kindly said later that if it wasn't for the dog, they, they probably wouldn't have found that individual. Teams taking on extremes, risking their own lives to find and save the lives of others. can also help them calm down after stressful situations. Our topic, service dogs and first responder dogs, are related to the frontiers in history topic because they helped disabled people, helped people since the 1700s, and how they helped first responders. In the United States, approximately 500,000 service dogs are helping people. Under the Americans with Disabilities Act, also known as the ADA, service dogs must be given access to almost everywhere their human handlers go. They make it possible for people with disabilities to live independently and overcome the challenges of day-to-day -day life. This documentary has explored the incredible bond between service dogs and their owners and the impact they've had on their lives. Dogs also have helped save lives while helping the police as part of the K-9 units, and they have also helped search and rescue crews find people in the aftermath of catastrophic events. These claims go to show that dogs are not only man's best friend, but also an invaluable asset to those with disabilities, uh, providing physical, emotional, and psychological support, and helping people save lives. This, this has been, been our History Day, Day documentary. documentary. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.